Hey there. Welcome to Hobie on YouTube. I hope everybody's doing well. I have an interesting and fun limited edition knife from Boker this time around. This is a canoe commemorating the Appalachian Trail that Boker released back in 1981. So it's not only a limited edition, but it's now vintage too. What is it? It's 40 years old. I've mentioned a few times that I don't normally go in for limited edition knives because I find that knife companies can just come up with an unlimited amount of limited edition knives. And sometimes the things they pick to commemorate are, are kind of silly. But I just love the Appalachian Trail and I like Boker canoes. So when I saw this available, I had to get it. Um, I had seen it featured in the Boker book by Neil Punchard and Ricky Ray before. It's featured on a couple of pages in this book. Here's a nice picture of it. And as you can see, it comes in this little presentation box. Um, here on the cover is a picture of the mountains, and it says Boker Limited Edition Knife Appalachian Trail. And then here on the inside, as you can see, there's a, a little blurb about the trail. It reads, the Appalachian Trail is the oldest and longest footpath in the world. Now, I'm not sure it's still the longest you know, I'm thinking maybe the Continental Divide is finished and maybe a little longer, but I'm not sure. Beginning at Springer Mountain in Georgia, the trail threads its way northeast more than 2,000 miles through 14 states, two national parks, that would be the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and Shenandoah, and eight national forests to Mount Katahdin in Maine. So if you live in the eastern United States, you know, chances are good that you live in a state the Appalachian Trail goes through, and you've probably got some experience with it. Um, this video is going to be probably just about as much about my experience with the Appalachian Trail as this knife, but hang on, because I'm going to get to the knife, and it's got some cool features. But um, I grew up in Georgia and used to go up to the North Georgia Mountains to play a lot. And uh, I did hike all 80 miles of the Appalachian Trail in Georgia. I did two different uh, trips. I started at uh, Amicalola State, Amicalola Falls State Park. Uh, a lot of people don't realize you can't just start at Springer Mountain. You don't just drive up to Springer Mountain. You've actually got to hike an approach trail of uh, seven or eight pretty tough miles just to get to Springer Mountain. So started at Amicalola State Park and hiked north to Unicoi Gap. And then the second part I went started at Standing Indian in North Carolina and hiked south to Unicoi Gap. So I got all 80 miles in Georgia and about 20 miles in North Carolina. Uh, I now live in North Carolina. I've hiked lots of little parts of it in North Carolina, but my days of backpacking big chunks of it are kind of over. <laughs> uh, I still do like to backpack a little bit, but just not multiple day trips too much anymore. Uh, I was a member of the Georgia Appalachian Trail Club when I was down there. And I think a lot of people don't realize that the Appalachian Trail is fully maintained by volunteers. It's not like, you know, your government employees from the National Park Service or National Forests or anything are out there working on those trails. Uh, they're all maintained by different clubs in different states like the Georgia Appalachian Trail Club. And when you're a member of a club like this, you go out on a lot of nice hikes with your fellow club members and some cool overnight trips and things. But one thing you're expected to do is to maintain the trail. And so I kind of have a little funny story about that. The first time I went out to do that, do, to do trail work with the club, I had this romantic notion that I would be, you know, uh, carving a path through the woods. And uh, then they handed me two five-gallon buckets full of lime, and I had to hike them up a mountain so we could uh, relocate a privy at a shelter, move an outhouse. <laughs> and I got to tell you, they almost ripped my arms out of their sockets. Uh, the next time we went out, uh, was to obliterate a big section of the trail, which is kind of unusual. Uh, the trail actually in Georgia is pretty challenging. It's Georgia doesn't have the biggest mountains, of course, but it's really gap to peak to gap to peak, and it's up and down, up and down. And because of that, uh, there's a lot of erosion, or was. So one of, the, one of the things the club was doing at the time was rerouting a lot of the trail around those peaks, side hilling around. And so we went out and obliterated the section of the trail, which means you just go out on either side of the trail into the woods and grab rocks and sticks and fallen limbs and trees, whatever you could get, and throw them in the trail. <laughs> you try to just make the trail 
so trashed out, no one would want to walk through it to, to encourage them to take the new route. So uh, it's not all glamour for sure. All right, so Boker released this 40 years ago, and it does have a lot of nice features. I think they did a very good job with it. Uh, the first thing you'll see is this special shield that reads Appalachian Trail, and it's made to look like a trail sign, right? Uh, it's probably brass with a kind of blackened background, but it kind of looks bronze or something. It's just really well done. And then a lot of people think these are plastic handles. Back in um, 1981, most regular bokers did come with just Delrin handles. They didn't really reintroduce natural materials until like 1983, according to the boker book. Um, so in 1981, they released this knife with rosewood handles, which was kind of special. So there was a little slip that came with this knife and box originally that had a little story about the Appalachian Trail and told you a little bit about the knife. I don't have that, unfortunately, but I have been able to see it online. And the way Boker described these handles were rough-hewn rosewood wood handles. Excuse me. And uh, I'm thinking it's probably... Uh, Brazilian rosewood or Amazon rosewood after consulting the wood database.com, which um, you know they could get back in 1981, but now it's hard to get. It's kind of a uh, restricted wood. I think it's kind of on the endangered list, rosewood. But you'll notice here on the back scale, uh, the bottom edge and the top edge, it looks like, oh, they stained it or something, and they, they missed this part. <laughs> what that is is a uh, delineation between the hardwood and the sapwood. So the hardwood of rosewood is this chocolatey brown or reddish brown, and the sapwood is always this uh, light yellow color. And so there you can see it. It's just a natural feature of rosewood. But uh, this has nickel silver bolsters and also kind of special for this knife, nickel silver pins, not brass. It does have, of course, brass liners. But uh, these are nicely domed and spun. And then the other thing that makes this knife so great are these blade etchings. And let me see if I can get it in the light so you can see it. And uh, the way Broker describes those, it says etched in a motif of mountain laurel and Appalachian crests, which is just the perfectly appropriate thing to put on this knife. If you hike the Appalachian Trail, two plants you're going to see plenty of are mountain laurel on the peaks and hillsides and uh, rhododendron down in the hollers, <laughs> down, down by the creeks and rivers and things. Both of them are uh, you know, pretty green leaves that are pretty much uh, evergreen, and they both flower at different times of the year and just blanket the hillsides and, and uh, streams and things with these beautiful flowers. Just, just absolutely great. Yeah, and there you can see it says 200 Limited. Well, 200 is the model number for Boker's Canoe, not the number of knives they put out. It is serialized here on the bolster. You can see this one is uh, 6,152. I don't know how many they produced uh, online. I have seen some as high as in the 9,000s, so probably like up to 10,000. I don't know if they went, went to five digits on this or not. I don't know, but, but plenty of them. And I would have thought that they would have made great gifts for anyone who had spent any amount of time on the trail. You know, if you're, certainly if you were a through hiker or knew a through hiker, this would be a great uh, gift to give them, kind of a reward uh, for that uh, unbelievable effort. Um, you know, if you were a Boy Scout that uh, hiked part of the trail to earn your backpacking merit badge or something, this would have been a great gift to get. I like Boker canoes. I just think they've got a really great shape to them and a really nice, almost leaf-shaped blade. And uh, the tank stamp on this one is Boker's normal tank stamp for that period of time, Boker, Zoligen, Germany. So that's Boker's commemorative Appalachian Trail limited edition canoe from 1981. I think it's just a great knife. I think Boker just did a wonderful job with it. It's very tasteful. It's very different. It's really high quality. Hey, do you have any experiences with the Appalachian Trail? I bet a lot of you out there do. I'd love to hear about them. Just, you know, if you've spent any time on the trail or got any great stories, please leave them in the comments for all of us. And as always, I appreciate you. 
and thanks for watching.